heart without eating any of its fruits, or who tends a flock without getting some of the milk. It is biblical, it is conceptual that, that the pastor, the leader of the church, get from the flock. He says, do I say these things on human authority? No. Does not the law say the same? For it is written in the law of Moses, you shall not muzzle an ox when it treads out the grain. Is it for oxen that God is concerned? Does he not speak entirely for our sake? It was written for our sake because the plowman should plow in hope and the thresher thresh in hope for sharing in the crop. If we have sown spiritual things among you, is it too much if we reap material things from you? If others share this rightful claim on you, do not we even more. It is my right. He has gone through an exhaustive exposition saying it is his right to do this. But Paul is the kind of preacher that knows how to sacrifice. He says, nevertheless, we have not made use of this right. I deserve certain things from the church. I should expect certain things, but, but nevertheless, I have not made use of this but we endure anything rather than put an obstacle in the way of the gospel of Christ. There has to be a time when it can't be about money. There's got to be a time when the preacher says, for the sake of the gospel, so that the gospel is not hindered, Keep your money in your pocket. Let me be a blessing to you. Let me not be a hindrance because someone is looking at this car that I'm driving and where I'm living and, and they're stumbling from seeing Jesus Christ, the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. Sometimes you got to put the money down. Sometimes you got to get to a place where you're sacrificing for the sake of the kingdom. Do you not know that those who are employed in the temple service get their food from the temple and those who serve at the altar share in the sacrificial offerings? In the same way the Lord commanded that those who proclaim the gospel should get their living by the gospel. But I have made no use of any of these rights, nor am I writing these things to secure any such provision. For I would rather die than have anyone deprive me of my ground for boasting. For if I preach the gospel, that gives me no ground for boasting. For necessity is laid upon me. Woe to me if I preach not the gospel. I don't preach the gospel for money. No, it's woe is me if I preach not the gospel. I am commissioned by God to do his work regardless if my pockets are fat or not, if I have a large audience or not, it is my right, my duty, my obligation to give glory to Jesus Christ and let everyone know that he lived, he died on a cross Amen. he rose from the dead on the third day that you might have a right to the tree of life he goes on to say Verse 17, for if I do this of my own will, I have a reward. But if not of my own will, I am still entrusted with stewardship. It doesn't matter. I'm still responsible. What then is my reward that in my preaching I may, may present the gospel, what, free of charge, so as not to make full use of my right in the gospel. For though I am free from all, I have made myself a servant to all that I might win them to the Jew. I became like the Jew in order to win the Jew and to those under the law as those under the law. And to those who are poor or in the hood, I became just like them that I might win them. I have to be flexible and able to go in any situation and speak to anyone for the sake of the gospel. But Paul had some enemies. See, they, see, folk have a problem with you when, 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 when you always getting money. It's a stumbling block. 
And so folk began to talk about Paul. And Paul said, uh-uh. I ain't taking no money from you. I'll learn how to have a trade. And Paul became a tent maker. He said, I'll get up and work a nine to five job just like everybody else because, amen, this gospel means a whole lot more than, than, than what folk are giving me. I will get up and, and go to work. Paul says, I'll learn how to sacrifice that my message may not be hindered. And now 2 Corinthians chapter number 11. Looking at verse 5. He says, 2 Corinthians 11 verse 5, Indeed, I consider that I'm not in the least inferior to these super apostles, those who think that they're all that. Even if I am unskilled in speaking, he's saying I would never be on the word network because I don't have the skills. I am not so in knowledge. Indeed, in every way we have made this plain to you in all things. Verse 7, or that I commit a sin in humbling myself so that you might be exalted because I preach God's gospel to you free of charge. And he's letting folk know that you've got some false preachers. In verse 11, for such men are false apostles, deceitful workmen, disguising themselves as apostles of Christ. Amen. And so what Paul is saying that I've got to distinguish myself from the charlatans and the frauds because I'm not working the same way that they work. And what Paul is saying, I'm going to distinguish myself by sacrificing myself to proclaim the gospel. And in chapter 9, he talks about this collection for the saints in Jerusalem. And when they're giving, amen, to Paul's ministry, he's not taking it for himself. He's taking it for the poor folks who are dying in Jerusalem. So if you look at chapter 9, verse 6, he says the point is this. Whoever sows sparingly will also reap sparingly. And whoever sows bountifully will also reap bountifully. Each one must give as he has what? Decided in his heart not reluctantly or under compulsion what God is saying don't let anybody put you under any compulsion to give more than you have decided to give in your heart now the giving as described in chapter 9 was not for Paul but it was for the poor saints but, but we heard over the pulpit that God loves a cheerful giver and that you should give to the man of God and that he can be exalted. But Paul was concerned about the poor folks in the hood who were dying. When's the last time we, re we redirected funds, offerings to help somebody in the street? We understood the nature of ministry and what God is trying to accomplish. It's not wealth, it's ministry. Mm -hmm. So now you've got pastors living in mansions with 10 rooms and 17 bathrooms. How many bathrooms can you use? How many cars can you drive? Used to be a time where folk preached a fantastic message, and then have an altar call, but now they take an offering. <laughs> Folk running up on a good message and throwing money at the pastor's feet. Right. I wish I had a witness. You start a service trying to get some money. For folk to give to the offering and folk don't give until a big name preacher comes in the midst and, and he says you're going to be blessed. Everybody runs. Yes. Not realizing the reason why he come up and, 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 and convinced you to give his money because he got to get his honorarium paid for. Oh my goodness. 
So I recognize in ministry, 